Hey everyone, thanks for coming back and joining me for another video. So today is Friday and I was having some serious laughs reading through the comments section on the last video. You, some of you guys are absolute geniuses. On the end of the last video, I said for you guys to mix up film titles because Harry and Meghan are reportedly going to start making rom-coms, oh, Lord help us all, for Netflix. So I said for you guys to have a bit of fun and see if you can make up some film titles using some famous, well-known films and you didn't disappoint. So we've got Petty Woman by Pagan Born Spirit Bear, Not Love Actually by Jenny Tolius, Fifty Shades of Crazy by Alice Waveyland, the Devil Wears Givenchy by Bless Your Heart. I love this one. This is a kid's film. How to Train Your Duke by Am Morgan. The Wedding Winger by Brexy. Claws by Penny Lando. Pride and Fake Prejudice by Marcia B. Then we had My Big Fat Royal Wedding by Don Simon and ending up with You've Got Blackmail by Another Marcia. There were lots of other fun ones in there. There were some of them that I'd probably get in trouble if I read out on the channel. But yeah, no, so that was a bit of fun. Thanks for joining in for that one. Now we've had photographs come out where it looks like the Princess of Wales was training for the next Ironman competition, but she was in fact visiting Lando Fort College in Derby to congratulate Captain Preet Chandy, who has just returned from her world record-breaking solo expedition across Antarctica. 33-year-old army medic Captain Chandy beat the previous world record holder who is retired Lieutenant Colonel Henry Worsley, who sadly in 2015 fell ill 126 miles short of completing the full journey and he died a day later after being flown to a hospital in Chile. Knowing that her predecessor had lost his life on this huge journey must have been daunting at times. She said of the journey, it feels incredible to have traveled such a distance, though it was always about so much more than a record. I'm just grateful that Ant I'm just grateful that Antarctica allowed me safe passage for my journey. Incredibly humble and beautiful words. This is truly insane. She covered 922 miles in 70 days and 16 hours, all by herself. And most days she survived on as little as five hours sleep. I don't know about you guys, but I would have to be on a solo expedition because if I get less than eight hours sleep on a regular basis, I am so nasty. I am like a mogwai that gets fed after midnight and this is the result. Now, as for Captain Preach, she's actually a medic in the army and Catherine was the patron for this solo trip. And this is where it gets even crazier. She had to pull all of her own gear, obviously being on her own. So all of her supplies, all of her kit in minus 30 degrees. She was dragging kit that weighed 120 kilograms. That's roughly 255 pounds all on her own. That is pretty heroic in itself. Now, Catherine being a good sport had a go at pulling the tiles whilst at the college as a demonstration for how Captain Chandy actually trained. Derby is actually her hometown and it's the start of her nationwide tour visiting other schools and she hopes that her achievements actually encourage future generations of girls and of course boys that you can dream big and achieve absolutely anything you can put your mind to. There's no denying that Captain Pre and this journey it was truly inspiring for many people, for anyone really. She's truly courageous to have taken on such a huge expedition. And I'll be honest, a bit of a badass. So on the 8th of February, we had King Charles and Queen Camilla visiting the very famous Brick Lane. <laughs> They were treated to a dance procession who walked them to the Grand Bangla restaurant where they met women involved with the British Bangladeshi Power and Inspiration Organisation. Thousands of people welcomed the royal couple, mostly from the British Bangladeshi community. They shook hands and chatted to many people in the crowds as they did a walkabout of Bangla town in celebrations of the contributions of the Bangladeshi community, which makes up part of our beautiful multicultural nation. Now, there was a moment which was quite funny that happened in the crowd. A member 
of the crowd was shouting, bring Harry back, sir, bring Harry back. Now, obviously, I think this was done for some sort of reaction, but Charles leant forward and said, who? And the crowd member said, Prince Harry, your son, bring him back. And Charles laughed it off. Now, I personally think that Charles just didn't hear. There's literally hundreds, thousands of people there all screaming, shaking hands. He's the other side of the barriers. And I think that he just genuinely didn't hear what he said. And that's why he laughed. I mean, Charles is hardly going to turn around and say, uh, no, thank you. But what's happened on social media and the way other people have twisted it, which is more funny, is that perhaps Charles did hear him. Harry! Harry who? I don't know a Harry anymore. Harry overseas. Funny either way, really, but as obviously the media do, they like to pick up a story like this, which makes me think perhaps the person in the crowd was deliberately planted. The royal couple then went on to plant an elm tree in memory of Altab Ali, a young man who was fatally stabbed in a racist attack back in 1978. Many people in the crowd were involved in the anti-racism movement in the 1970s. Now, this is one of the things that I know has pissed me off, and it has pissed a lot of people off in the UK about Harry and Meghan and the racist narrative that they have really, really pushed. It coincided with a lot of stuff that was happening in America and we've had a lot of American race politics that was spilt over into the UK. And all I want to say is our country is not perfect. Racism still sadly very much exists. But don't pretend and don't try and make out that the UK is not one of the most diverse and multicultural countries in the world. That is one thing that I'm very proud of my country for. And this is another reason, as I said, where Harry and Meghan have really pushed a really nasty narrative. All because they wanted to play victims and they also wanted to appeal to an American audience. And that is one thing that the public will never forgive them for. Now, before I get stuck onto the Montecito mayhem, let's talk about King Charles, who later went on and opened a new primary and nursing training unit at the University of East London. Yes, don't worry, that's not a patient in a bed, it's a dummy. No, not Harry. So, obviously, Charles was there meeting with the nurses, with all of the staff, and inside the university, they have a nursery where Charles actually met with one of the young members who was super excited to hand his flowers over to Charles. <laughs> what a cute little boy and all I've got to say is he was given a job, he committed fully. Well done young man, well done. <laughs> Now, finishing up with the final story about King Charles, he was at Windsor and he was handing out a very well-deserved OBE to one of my favourite singers that's ever existed, Skin from Skunk and Ancy, part of a legendary 90s rock band. They still perform now. She has got one of the most powerful female rock voices ever. So much so when I saw this photograph, I went straight on Spotify and started listening to their older albums. She totally deserves this. Now, Skin, her real name being Deborah Ann Dyer, I love her outfit. I love the contrast with being in one of the Windsor stately rooms with the king dressed in all his uniform and regalia, and she has stayed completely true to herself. It's totally well-deserved for her contributions to the world of music. Skin and Skunk and Nancy are definitely someone that I would possibly jump over someone's shoulders to get a concert ticket to go see. Now, in the world of Markle, but not her, no, we're talking about the nicer sister, Samantha has actually had a small victory in her fight to get the truth actually finally out of Meghan's mouth. Now, the court case for Samantha is actually just trying to get Meghan to tell the truth because a lot of lies were told on Oprah. It's not just the royal family that have been damaged by this couple. The entire Markle family, Thomas Markle and Samantha, she's obviously trashed her father in respect of he gave her absolutely everything. Meghan grew up a very, very privileged young woman. She grew up in some of the most expensive schools, went to the most expensive universities, but she lied and did a rags to riches story like she was Orphan Annie, the little matchstick girl that was forced to work at the age of 14 just to make ends meet. She put herself through college and it's so disrespectful to her father that literally gave her everything that he could to give her every step up in life and look how she's treated him. But also with Samantha, she said some really derogatory things about Samantha and she's also lied about when she saw her. Okay, the sisters may not have a good relationship now. It doesn't seem like Megan has a good relationship with anyone. But the point is Samantha is trying to say that she did have siblings. She's been lying this whole time. 
I want her to tell the truth. Now, where her victory has come in is the judge presiding over the case has ruled that Meghan and Harry have to give recorded dispositions where they have to sit there and answer truthfully a lot of the questions that Samantha has raised. Now, their only snag that I can see happening, I have since read that Meghan is at trying her absolute hardest to have it thrown out of court. Meghan does have a lot of money and she does seem to get away with everything and she certainly has help from people in the past that have pulled strings for her. So I don't know whether this actually will see the light of day. It's been scheduled for July but I really have my fingers and toes crossed for Samantha because the amount of lies that Harry and Meghan have told, it's about time that someone that they've hurt actually finally sees some justice. Now, following on from my last video where I spoke about the rumour of Meghan spending time with a certain 89-year-old billionaire Gordon Getty, there's another one that surfaced and it isn't to do with sucking up to a rich old billionaire. Now, this one has actually been released by another YouTuber called Neil Sean. He has come forward to say that Harry is not just embarrassed about Sasha Walpole coming out and telling her side of the story of Harry's big virginity headlining story, Harry the Stallion or My Little Pony, but he's actually seeking legal advice to try and silence her. Now, again, I say this, I don't know if this is true. This could just be a rumour, but I wouldn't put it past Harry or Meghan to try and sue someone. You know, they're a little bit rich with their arguments. They're complete hypocrites for a start. So speaking of a bit of hypocrisy here, the Sasha Walpole story, you are having people defend Harry saying, well, she's done a kiss or tell. She didn't need to out herself. People didn't know who it was. She knew who it was. Their friends were texting her. They knew who it was. Harry was a royal prince. He was second in line behind William. He was kept in small social circles. How long do you think it would be before they tracked down the woman who liked riding stallions, slapped him on his ass, and sent him on his way? They knew the age that he was because he told them. He made it out to be so seedy and salacious that of course it attracted media attention. And he even said in his own words, among the many things about it that were wrong. He's used the word wrong whilst describing what happened. So how long do you think it would be before an interviewer actually turns around and says, so Harry, when describing losing your virginity, you said that this, this older woman, you said all the things about it that were kind of wrong. So do you feel that this older woman might have used you, taken advantage of you? Because let's be honest, Harry and Meghan have come out with a lot of stuff. They have chosen every possible narrative to get some sort of victim mentality. Now, I saw on social media when the story first broke, not Sasha, but Harry, when the book came out, that this older woman had slapped him on his ass, giving him a quick ride behind the pub. I know too much information. But the Sussex Squad fan base, who some of them are complete nut jobs, were saying they're going to hunt down who it is. They're going to make sure that they get police charges put against them. They should be done for sex with a minor. They're just as bad as Prince Andrew. And you, can you imagine being Sasha or her friends and other people that would have known that it was her from that small social circle? So yeah, Sasha coming forward, it's her story to tell as well. I'm sorry, but it takes two people to do the horizontal tango. He should have had enough respect to have at least asked her if he could put it in the book. And to be honest with you, a gentleman should have never put something as detailed as that. At the end of the day, the truth, as it turns out, is the fact that it was two teenagers that got a little bit drunk and had a drunken fumble. The fact that Harry made the story out to be so seedy, of course it was going to grab headlines and of course the media were going to try and hunt down who it was. So by Sasha coming forward I think was really brave because can you imagine that the Sussex Squad fan base, what they're probably doing now, she's probably getting phone calls, she's probably getting you know threats, she's probably getting vile things said about her all over the internet. So I say hats off to her, I hope she has made a decent wedge of money and it was downright disrespectful, completely ungentlemanly of Harry to have actually even thought about putting that in his book. As Megan Kelly said he's classless thoughtless vulgar and a total hypocrite and i couldn't happen to agree more now on a lighter note to do with harry looseness virginity someone on twitter i'm not going to reveal their name because just in case they get grief for it but it's absolutely hilarious they went <laughs> onto google maps and they pinpointed 
where Harry actually lost his virginity and they made it into a Google landmark and it actually got approved. Now I have since tried to look for it and I believe that it has been taken down, but I think that's absolutely devilish and really funny. The more people that embarrass Harry over this, I think the better. He really does deserve it. But could you imagine one day if someone actually puts a plaque or a signpost up? I even, because I was feeling really creative with reading your posts to do with the film titles, I thought to myself, I could make up a little poem to go on the plaque. Here it was one day when a ginger prince had a roll in the hay. He was a little drunk, a little merry. He jumped a fence and popped his cherry. So please do be careful where you stand. Virginity is lost easily on this land. I know, I missed a calling in life. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> So on that delightful note and my bit of poetry, I will be back with you guys very, very soon. So take care for now. Bye. If you would like to buy me a coffee, please go to my about page and click the link. Love, Taz.